Thank you very much. Um, first of all, this presentation will be not about Homer. So it will be something new, uh, what we need your help, your input about. Uh, okay, first of all, uh, uh, my name is Alexander Dobrykov. I am a senior voice architect at QSC AG. This is a big uh, German carrier. Uh, um, and uh, I'm also founder and developer of Homer Project Zip Capture, and uh, um, I'm CTO of QXIP. This is a company who is normally it's maintained home, home, applica uh, home application. Uh, this presentation is. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's Apple, you yeah. know. Sorry, my mistake. Okay. Um, so, this presentation is about to get your feedback, your input, uh, how we can make this project better. And uh, we are very, we will be very, oh, sorry. We will be very appreciated uh, if you, after this presentation, you will um, give your feedbacks and send us an email, and we can exactly discuss uh, how this project uh, can grow up. About fraud attack, uh, this problem I should not in introduce because bad guys 24-7 uh, send a lot of uh, zip, okay, uh, scans, they use zip features or another application, try to, to find uh, 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 exploit or gaps, uh, uh, stolen your account in your network, and uh, use these uh, this, um, account, uh, accounts to generate a, a lot of uh, frauds and uh, burn your money. Your uh, big problem, what uh, most operators, uh, they uh, try to, um, uh, to maintain uh, or defend them themselves. They install special applications, they develop special applications, but it's normally it's only internal, internal stuff or internal application inside one company, and uh, nobody will share this information. And if uh, one of you, uh, which uh, normally start working in voice or IP uh, uh, network, just install Kamaili or FreeSwitch, you, you just install it, you create a um, default user, you can connect it, and that's it. So you are, you are happy, but you're not thinking about how to prevent your system. Uh, and here you can say, yeah, it's already a solution that already exists. And I can say, not really, because all of this solution, what you uh, use to prevent or to protect your system, is a base or uh, fail to ban uh, application, or you can uh, scan or parse CDRs, and this is not a real time. Also, um, uh, if you try to use an external application or external blacklisting, like uh, VoIP blacklist, you are not sure or you could not trust it um, which IP addresses is already listed. Yeah? So you should be sure what uh, your IP, what you, you use in your network, will be not listed in this uh, blacklist, and, and, and so on. And uh, normally what you can do is uh, run uh, private private backlist, uh, which is normally it's a good application, but it's very hard to to de uh, to deploy in uh, in a big amount of uh, of server. For example, if you have only two or uh, three Camellia server or free switch, you can install this fail to ban. You can uh, pass CDRs. You can uh, set IP tables, and uh, you can protect uh, your system to, uh, if you have some uh, uh, fraud attacks. Or you can, uh, as I mentioned already, you can use external backlist. Uh, which uh, has uh, its pro, its weight factor, 100%, but you are not trusted anymore who is uh, populated with this blacklist. And uh, about open source, uh, open source is a great ecosystem uh, which uh, includes a lot of great people, a lot of great engineers, a lot of great uh, developers who work in day and night to make uh, open source uh, voice, voice system better. Camille, it doesn't matter which system we are talking about. Camille, OpenZip, Free Switch, they are great products, but. Unfortunately, uh, there is no uh, system or not yet developed system which can provide uh, really prevention uh, to protect your, your uh, voice network uh, for fraud. And here it was um, born the idea to create a distributed backlist uh, for real-time communication and some of uh, um, very important goals of this um, system. It should be, it should be real-time, just like our communication. It should be distributed without any complexity. Uh, it should be offline first. It, should, uh, it means what it will be always pr primary goal for, for you if uh, your network goes down and you only have a voice network inside on your system. You should always use, um, able to use it and uh, make a request. It should be um, 
open, open source and, and should be exactly community maintained, uh, and all information that will be in this backlist it should be trusted. And of course, if um, uh, one of big operators, let's say like QAC or Zipgate, uh, try to uh, to push this information to this backlist, it should be trusted. So for this case, if you, uh, Zipgate or QC will send uh, information what they, co they um, uh, co uh, collected in uh, uh, the network and they push this information to community and you can immediately just, uh, use it with uh, information to protect your system uh, for, um, for fraud or, or for DOS attacks. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Um, just to um, not talk about, about this idea, we created a, sp a small application which called Caship. This is Caship application based on Node.js, and uh, uh, this is first prototype, but you already can download it and install from our repository. Uh, and uh, Caship is exactly an application which can uh, give you a possibility to use like uh, the DNS backlist, so you have uh, a couple of interfaces which can you use like uh, DNS or Enum uh, request in A, or you can use plain REST API in JSON API, which uh, uh, give you a response in JSON. You can exactly parse it and uh, and work uh, working on it. And uh, behind behind of this cache application, we uh, you can connect it uh, any types of database. Uh, it can be currently we use Redis, and uh, in our plans, it's. Um, Connected uh, GrandDB is the biggest application, and which will be works like peer-to-peer -peer networks, with, without a single point of failure. This means if uh, uh, if any of nodes of this system, backlist system, goes down, it will not affect it at all. Uh, you can still work in, uh, work in and use it in your in your network. Uh, why, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, uh, we currently we use Redis uh, backend. You can also use Redis uh, 3.0 like distributed uh, system right now. But our goal to use GunDB is GunDB is a graph uh, graph systems which can handle uh, a lot of requests. It's over uh, 15 million requests per, uh, per seconds, and exactly it's focusing on B. Uh, offline first um, uh, uh, database. This means what uh, once you install it on uh, your local machine, it will be created a local copy of data, and only periodically, like peer-to-peer -peer protocol, will be update. If any updates come to backlist, it will be automatically updated in your local network, and be, be offline first. And uh, we already discussed with um, GunDB uh, developers, and they would like to also to um, to help us to implement it cache uh, in uh, uh, GunDB. And exactly in this case, GunDB will uh, take a, a central role uh, using uh, um, cross development and uh, be 100% um, available system uh, in this distribution list. So how it will be works? Uh, the idea is very simple. For example, we have Camaillo asterisk. Uh, and it's your federation. Uh, you can install uh, cache in your in one of your machines in your network. It will be your federation. And if you get, get attacks or scans, you will be automatically uh, you send request to cache DB. You will not find this information. But uh, on your internal mechanism, what you can exactly implement it, or in Camaillo, or you can use external application to make uh, parsing of logs. You can uh, send a REST API request to um, to cache and uh, set this, inf this IP, for example, or this destination will be blocked for next uh, amount of seconds. Uh, this timeout, you can define it by itself. And uh, in this scenario, cache will, uh, will be connected to your local GunDB instance, and GunDB will uh, send this information to, to cloud. And uh, this information, like I said before, will be distributed across, uh, across uh, this ring, uh, or let's say cloud, um, uh, stuff uh, between all any uh, small instances uh, in your another federation or probably in other customers. And in this case, it's will be automatically, automatically blocked. This means once you blocked in one instance of cache, it uh, will be automatically uh, blocked uh, in, uh, in uh, any, any federation which can use this, uh, this uh, network. Why it's the uh, best solution? For example, Sebastian um, uh, this morning is uh, uh, from Zipgate. They uh, presented uh, how they implemented um, blacklisting inside of Zip Zipgate. It's a very good uh, solution. Uh, it's where you use uh, internal um, hash table of Camellia. But the problem is this solution can work only uh, between Camellia instances. 
Uh, but what about if you have not only Camaillo, but you have free switch or asterisk or uh, open zips? This is exactly a good, a good point of this, uh, this concept. Uh, you can use any types of system, uh, and uh, they can ex exactly get information from, uh, from a cache, from uh, blacklisted, and you can uh, use this blacklist across all your um, um, nodes. And instance uh, ca uh, cases uh, is exactly uh, Caship is also, uh, as I said already, uh, Caship is already developed. You can download it from our uh, Git repository. You can install it, and uh, the uh, uh, this Caship you can use in uh, in following scenario. It's uh, it's real-time distributed backlist, like I mentioned before. You can uh, set um, a block for IP address, source IP address of a scanner or uh, attackers. Also, you can do uh, like uh, an APT uh, request. You can block a special destination. For example, you have one IP, you get a lot of scans, but this is your customer and you don't want to block it 100% uh, uh, of uh, this traffic. You can also set some uh, uh, blocks to special destination. For example, it will be blocked uh, international calls uh, just for this, num uh, for this number. Uh, also, what you can do is exactly uh, it was in, uh, in my presentation um, in um, the danger of demo. You can use cache up application uh, to uh, make a teardown uh, which are already already connected calls. So you have uh, outgoing calls. You can exactly block block this IP. But what's uh, the problem is uh, if you have already connected calls and you have a lot of uh, free switches or or even Camaillo, which doesn't have any information. Uh, about uh, uh, calls, uh, in, in, in case of Camaillo, if it's stateless, you have to parse CDRs to, to disconnect it or to find calls which should be uh, dropped or teared down. In this case, cache application uh, together with uh, Homer or Hepic uh, can extract this information from database, uh, find which calls are already connected, and you can uh, use uh, a special plugins what we develop uh, to tear down all calls. And in this case, uh, you not only protect uh, for next uh, um, frauds calls, but already calls which are already established will be will be disconnected, and you will not burn your money. Uh, also, what the cache of what can be used is uh, number portability services uh, or redirection service, and of course uh, for some CDR and session session correlation, this application can be also used. Uh, Botticelli Inferno, probably you know this uh, uh, picture. Uh, it's called uh, Nine Circle of Hell. Why I'm um, talking, uh, or I mentioned Nine Circle of Hell? Because uh, some of operators or some of users uh, uh, wants to um, be sure what um, IP, which will be located in this blacklist, will be, uh, will be trusted, so it will be not pausing. Yeah? So it, this means what we can def uh, define, uh, or user can define uh, several levels of backlist uh, domains, which will uh, contain uh, information uh, based on how many requests or how many um, um, uh, okay, um, uh, how many requests was uh, uh, sent from authorization user. What this means, for example, if you are trusted user in uh, this backlist and you have special key and you reported what this IP address is, uh, uh, this IP address. Um, has scanned my system and uh, or this IP address use zip features or another sca scanner um, application, you send a request what this IP address should be blocked. You can send exactly to your local cache uh, instance and cache will be automatically using this, um, this um, uh, special authorization key will be, uh, will be put, uh, sent a request to, to cloud. If, uh, if in this cloud we receive um, in uh, X amount of time, for example one hour, we receive Three requests for this IP, it will be go automatically to uh, level one. If uh, and exactly, it's, it will be after 12 hours. This um, IP address will be automatically removed or expired. But if this IP uh, to next day will be reported from uh, from many uh, from five authorization users or from many, it will be automatically go to another level or another box, uh, and uh, this IP will be staying in this block uh, a little bit longer, but one day, or we can exactly you can decide decide uh, how, how this detail time which. Um, uh, what time it will be for, for removing, and so on, so on, so on. And next level, it's exactly not, uh, level number nine, uh, which means uh, all everything. It's uh, what is this um, uh, box 
uh, this is very uh, dangerous IPs, and this was uh, in last months uh, was always in scan and abuse team uh, even not reacted uh, or user what to maintain the server uh, not reacted to clean up uh, and uh, we use like like Tor system or something like this, and in this case it will be permanently locked. Uh, how it works is just uh, small examples. It's here, for example, we use curl application. We send a request to block this destination for uh, 60 uh, seconds, it's, um, it's milliseconds here. Uh, you can do exactly an enamel cap for an APTR uh, to get this information if it's, this destination is already blocked in, in the system. Or you can do also uh, in a lookup uh, to check if uh, this IP address is uh, blocked or not. Uh, what we do if uh, we found this IP address is blocked, we just return uh, in a same same IP what you requested, and we set uh, in uh, in reply we set exactly detail time what uh, this records will be expired. So this means what uh, this information we will store it in your local uh, DNS cache, and you should not request again and again this server. So it's it's uh, will be very uh, very good uh, performance, and of course you can use Carl application to get some information, in, especially in free switch or asterisk, which doesn't support um, a direct in, uh, in our uh, the next request from, from configs. Uh, but you, of course, you can use this uh, car application to get this JSON, JSON response. You can parse it, and uh, based on, on information what located in JSON response, you can uh, make your decision, block it, or, or um, allow uh, this call, uh, this, uh, call uh, go to the next destination. Uh, uh, especially what he, uh, here is some examples how you can use it with or uh, API lookup or uh, thanks God, uh, especially uh, thank you uh, Daniel, what he's implemented with uh, uh, special in IP ops module uh, function which uh, calls the NES int match IP. So from Kamei, uh, from Kamei config you can do uh, a lookup in the, in the NES system, uh, which will be cached in this case. And uh, exactly like I mentioned before, based on information of source IP address, you will find this is IP addresses or block it or not block it, and you can exactly or uh, if it's zip features, uh, you can send exactly message of death, a special zip uh, zip, uh, zip message will be kill um, scanners, or you can just ignore or uh, make a drop and not send any reply uh, to this uh, request. Um, here is a big four uh, um, voice IP platforms which everybody use. Uh, this is Camelio, of course, OpenZips, uh, Free Switch, and Asterisk. And uh, we tested, uh, we created real um, working configs, which will be help you to protect your system. And of course, we started from Camelio. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, thanks Daniel, we, he's implemented this nice feature, uh, which is an IP ops uh, module. It's called uh, uh, DNS in, uh, in match IP. So you, you, uh, this means what you can install cache uh, application on one of your node in your network. Uh, you can exactly use your local DNS uh, root um, zone, or uh, if you don't want to do it, you can install DNS mask uh, diamond, which can uh, handle or can root all requests based on, uh, on, uh, on um, uh, host name. And uh, in this case, a Camellia application, do you see it or it's not? Uh, sure, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, so you can download it here, you can read it. But normally it's exactly, you, you receive um, a register, you set uh, a pseudo variable to uh, IP address and uh, the, uh, root, uh, root domain name, root zone, and you send this request using the NES uh, uh, int match IP. If you get reply, uh, and IP address is exactly the same what uh, you uh, send request, you uh, send some statistics um, just to, to show uh, how many requests uh, or blocked requests uh, you have uh, produced. You check if it's friendly scanner, and in this case, you generated this um, uh, nice, nice module or nice functions, uh, HTTP async query, uh, to uh, send a REST API request to block this IP for next uh, six, uh, 60 seconds. And uh, if you I received exactly if it's a match, you can block it, and if it's not match, exactly you uh, you do um, um, uh, exactly you can uh, match if it's friendly scanner or not. 
Uh, also, if you use OpenZips, uh, but somebody use it, uh, unfortunately, um, OpenZips doesn't have this nice, nice uh, function uh, which can you do um, um, the next query in configs. Uh, in this case, you will use uh, rest, rest post uh, function, which normally it's uh, just normal HTTP request to uh, to uh, cache up and uh, using cache HTTP request you get a JSON response you, and parse, parse this response you will see if its destination is blocked and you uh, do a uh, similar way what you, you can do it in Camellia. Uh, uh, free switch, uh, unfortunately Yenam in free switch is a little bit, um, uh, okay, so let's say uh, it's not flexible and uh, you, uh, if you put uh, some um, uh, source, IP, uh, source IP, for example, or one IP to enum request, it's immediately parsed to, uh, or it's tried to, uh, expect to get a E146 format. And in this case, it's not, um, it's not available to use enum module. But we already spoke uh, with William King and we will um, uh, extend this uh, module and free switch can be in future to also support the NES, uh, the NES query from configs. But, uh, um, uh, but for current solution, if you have uh, free switch, you can exactly use uh, uh, mod caro, uh, which give you possibility to make requests to, uh, to cache application. And based on exactly information, you can uh, make a system and use NGK, NGK, um, uh, system, applic uh, system application, which uh, normally parse uh, JSON request and uh, based on on, um, on reply, uh, Boolean reply, true or, or false, you can exactly block uh, this call or you just play announcement in this case. And of course, asterisk, uh, it's same situation. Uh, Sirius doesn't have enum uh, support well. And we use, uh, you can use Caro application. It's here, it's very, uh, very easy. It's just install uh, Caro like system, uh, system uh, application and using uh, Caro uh, variable in uh, asterisk extension config, you can use it and uh, block your destination. Okay, so statistic. Uh, we did, uh, as I said before, or mentioned before, uh, we did some experiment. We installed uh, Camellia, OpenZip, Free Switch, and asterisk in uh, enhancement network. And immediately after, after installation, we get a lot of requests, a lot of scans. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, Camille was a winner <laughs> because he get a lot of scans. Uh, uh, and if you look in here in statistics, exactly from uh, how, how many uh, requests is, was uh, blocked or immediately. So we just check if uh, um, scans was from zip features or similar uh, client. We block it immediately. And uh, it was also surprising because I expect what, uh, what IP uh, addresses will be from China or from, I don't know, from Russia. Uh, but <laughs> most of it was France uh, and Germany. Uh, yeah, some, some requests, if you see, it's from, uh, it was from Romania. Probably it's, uh, Daniel did something. <laughs> 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 uh, and uh, very less requests from uh, from United States. Uh, so um, probably um, uh, this button that works, works like we try to, uh, to get a request to RIPE, to get networks which are um, located in the uh, in same region and scans uh, if any uh, host can be, can be um, hacked. Yeah. Uh, but of course, it's a very good, uh, very, uh, very simple, um, uh, simple stuff uh, which give you um, 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 a review uh, how bot networks, uh, networks uh, works because exactly if you, uh, one of host uh, from uh, example in this case it was uh, Hetzner uh, uh, already infected and this bot application um, uh, tried to uh, to scan first of uh, broadcasting by using broadcast and so on uh, if any network uh, any host is available or any application on port 5060 is available we try to force a brutal force uh, and once it's infect, infected or uh, has some issues we uh, try to send fraud, uh, fraud stuff. And uh, next, uh, next stuff, what I would like to uh, talk about is, uh, is what I showed in the, during um, Dangerous Demo. It was very, sh very short, uh, but here I can exactly explain uh, how it works. Um, most of uh, stuff is exactly like I mentioned before, it's, uh, you send, uh, you get, uh, you, okay, for example, you have and develop a the, uh, team which exactly use um, uh, fraud prevent or try to make fraud prevention. And normally it's 99% uh, is based on CDRs, CDRs for information. 
but uh, in this case, we said, oh, okay, this user is already um, already uh, should be blocked. We sent a request to knock team and knock team or authorization uh, system block this user, and a new calls uh, which uh, will arrive in your system will be blocked. But what is about calls which are already established? Because this call can be, can be, uh, be 24 hours, or, and exactly if they call to Iridium numbers or to Sierra Leone numbers, uh, premium numbers, which uh, will uh, burn your money. And, uh, and in case you have, if you have uh, very big networks and you have a lot of uh, nodes, free switches, asterisk, and, and so on, it's very hard to, uh, to tear down all calls or using, uh, in, in case of free switch, using a SL application. Uh, and, but in Camarillo's case, if you especially um, uh, in stateless mode, uh, you don't need any tra uh, uh, dialogue transactions, you, ca you have to, uh, to parse only CDRs and make detection which calls are still, uh, still uh, open. And uh, here, using our application, uh, we uh, can tear down these calls, how it works, it's very simple. Um, Careship uh, can talk to Homer, or in this case it's Hepic, it's the next uh, Homer generation. Uh, Hepic, uh, let's say Hepic Homer, can collect all messages from your network. You have already sent this information to Homer. Uh, and uh, using REST API, uh, we can exactly make a request to Homer, and, and uh, based on the res um, response of Homer, we can uh, see which calls is still uh, open. And uh, uh, Cache will parse invite and 200k of uh, these sessions. And based on this information, we, will, we generate a buy request and send to exactly to host, which uh, affected uh, this call is established. And we tested with free switch, we tested with Camarillo, Asterisk, and uh, exactly free switch was in dangerous demo. They accepted um, uh, this buy, and they uh, just check if it's from uh, tech to tech, and also branch via and call ID is same, or they have an internal hash table uh, with call. And they just tear down this call, they disconnected this call, and um, you save your money. In this case, exactly, it works very well. Uh, also, what I can mention, uh, we tested with Zipwise application, the Zipwise provider, which has a very complex uh, scenario inside. We use uh, ZEMS, uh, SEMS, SMS, Camarillo, and uh, first we tried just send a buy with uh, using uh, from, uh, from and to tech, and it doesn't work. And we check, we, we have to also um, parse invite and 200k to extract record root information. And uh, via, uh, we have, we use special branch, uh, branch, in, branch in D. And using this information, we send uh, buy and uh, all calls were dis was disconnected also in uh, zip, zip wise platform. So from, from us, we, uh, we also test with Huawei platform, it works perfect, with Acme packet and, and so on and so on. So in, in your case, if you would like to, uh, to protect it and uh, to, uh, to be sure what all calls would um, produce fraud, uh, we will be disconnected. You can use this application. You, it's already uh, in our repository, GitHub repository, and uh, using Homer uh, API, you can exactly protect your network. And uh, this is what, as I mentioned um, in the beginning of our, my presentation, this is only normally its concept. Yeah, and we uh, very we will be very appreciated uh, to get um, any feedback, any inputs about this project, uh, because we, um, we would like just make our life easy. And uh, we'd like to, uh, to protect uh, our networks and uh, uh, just uh, make a <laughs> less fraud and uh, okay, make uh, everybody happy. So uh, thank, thank you very, very much. Uh, if you have any questions, you can exactly contact me or Lorenzo. Uh, we are always available on uh, emails or in uh, Slack channels. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexander. <laughs> questions? Anyone, David? And one more then. Um, is it a smart idea to actually put in the algorithm that cuts them off into the database as opposed to just putting the information in and letting every operator decide what they think is fraud or what isn't? We find it very geographical. It's different in every geography, call durations, call attempts. So rather than say block this number for 60 seconds or for whatever, just say, this is the count, this is the hit count, these are the, param these are the parameters and then have a separate algorithm that you could decide which algorithms you want to you use. Because I'm not so sure that the entire community wants to use the same metrics. Carriers may be different, tier threes, tier two, tier ones, 
they may have different requirements. Uh, okay, but in this case, exactly, you can install Cache application and you can use it uh, based on your requirement. So you can put any information to Cache because it's, will be, uh, uh, it's like I said before, it's offline first. It's, it's your instance. What you push to, to, uh, to cloud, it's exactly what we can, we can decide together. Yeah? So it's, uh, if you trust a user, you can push this information, and this information we will cross uh, over all Cache uh, installations because GunDB inside just a peer-to-peer -peer network, which give you possibility to share this information what you uh, already, uh, already created. What you can do, it's exactly, you can just be a leisure, uh, okay, so, uh, uh, just, uh, uh, just get information from, from network, but uh, you can create it your whitelist, you can create it a gray list if you want, uh, just a block for 60 seconds with IP, and this will be your federation. So you can, in your federation, you can do uh, everything what you, do, uh, what you want. Okay, so probably you need to agree as it is a consent. The last, you want a question? Or? Okay, last question and just to say it's a change in the schedule because we are behind, we'll have the uh, coffee break, but before the coffee break will be the drone awarding moment plus uh, dangerous uh, demo. So last question and stay a bit here, we'll have the coffee break and then we'll continue with the sessions. Karsten. Thanks, Alexander. Um, quick comment. Um, well done. Um, okay, thank you looks much. awesome. Thanks for GunDB. It looks like it has potential to be my new favorite thing. Um, and we've got seven years of, eight years of Honeypot data, which we'd be quite happy to seed it with if that's of cool. any help. Um, the obvious question for me, though, is, um, is around the poisoning and how somebody becomes a trusted user. Exactly. Uh, in this case, uh, it was the same question from uh, Lorenzo. Um, <laughs> and uh, we already discussed. Uh, first of all, we, uh, we would, what my idea, and it's probably be wrong, and exactly what, why I need your input in your comments, uh, big carrier, which uh, like QSC or ZipGate, or probably maybe with the phone, we can trust 100% uh, what they do, because this is a big carrier, and we, would, we will not uh, send the garbage in. And uh, we can define together which uh, a level of users can be trusted and can push this information to this cloud, this, uh, this GunDB, which uh, you can trust it or not trust it. It depends on you. Exactly, we can create this nine level of uh, hell, which can be exactly for from QC. It will be uh, level two to, uh, to uh, ZipGate because it's a very good uh, provider. Go immediately to level of eight, and you will decide which level you you would like to to uh, to, uh, to use or to your choice. What you can exactly to prevent uh, um, just to avoid a uh, situation where IP from your users uh, will be uh, in this backlisted. You can exactly what I sent, said before. You can create a whitelist in Cache. And uh, just to avoid, uh, check if this IP in whitelist, it will be immediately reply you, no, it's your, uh, your, um, your user, you, I will not check um, the real backlist. But again, this is in only input and your information feedback, how we can uh, uh, make trust, trust of this, uh, this backlist, what this information will be located in, uh, in uh, this GunDB. And uh, therefore, I, I need your feedback and your... your um, no, great, we'll, we'll have a chat. Okay. okay, absolutely. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Alexander.